I can feel many presents, many dragons that are welcoming me and I feel like uh, there is no landscape it could as well be it could as well be in the space but um, it's, it's like they tell me if it's easier for me they can set a landscape so I can imagine a landscape but we could also say, stay in space or in this like vast space where there is nothing but energy. What do you prefer? Oh, just no, we could stay in space so I can focus on their presence only. Okay, very good. There are three, three of them. Mm -hmm. I can feel like they are in front of me. Uh, I can feel them mm -hmm. smiling and welcoming me as myself, as a, as a dragon. They know, <laughs> they know I'm like a messenger and it's like I, I traveled all the way to them and taking back my dragon shape and then eventually I will have to go back on earth and give the messages. I don't know if it's clear. <laughs> It's very, very clear and it's very, mm. very beautiful. Mm. So, in a sense, you have reunited with them now. Yeah. Yes, I feel there are three of them, but there is one that I can feel, I can really feel like stronger than the others on my right, in front of me on my right. Mm -hmm. Would you like to describe for us, how do these beings look like? Um, well, they are huge, huge. Like, they could be as huge as a planet or, but they can have also a shape. This one would be mm, quite dark, green, brown. I think I know this one. I think he's one of my guides. You feel some familiarity with, with him? Yeah. Yeah, well, actually yesterday night when I was asking them to connect with me for this, well, for today's session, I felt his presence and that he said, he said, I will be there. Looks like he kept his promise. Yeah. <laughs> the other two, I'm not sure. I can't really feel them as clear as the first one. Mm. Okay, so going back to the most prominent one, the one who is closer to you. Mm -hmm. mm, what more could you tell me about um, about this being um does this being have a um, more feminine or masculine energy first of all it's mm, rather masculine mm. yes masculine okay. it's more like a like a big dragon mm, that could look like um have you seen the movie dragon heart no. It's a movie from 1997, something like that. Okay. But then, well, the dragon looks like that, like a quite a massive dragon, earthy dragon with horns. What is he doing now as you are connecting with um, him? Um, I feel like they're all waiting pa patiently. <laughs> <laughs> What are they waiting for? The questions. Okay. Okay, so they are very well aware that we want to connect with them today and ask them. Yeah. Yes. They said that it, and they knew about it. Yes. Wow. It was meant it was meant to be. So I want to personally thank them for their presence. Mm. I'm honored that they are here for us today. First of all, 
would he like to give us um, a name? Maybe we could refer to him with a name? Yes, just asking him to confirm because I know his name, but I want to confirm so. Okay. Yes, it's uh, Smur. Yes, Smur. Yes. Mm. S M U R. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, I would like to ask him um, what, why, why is he that came today? What is his connection with you? Um, first thing that came to my mind is that he said, I'm the messenger for today and asking him who is to me. He says he's like my, like my teacher or kind of a tutor, kind of a parent, something like that. He's watching over me. It's like a supervisor. Because <laughs> um, I was asking him why why he's coming and he said something like like uh, he also has things to say okay. great so I would like to give him this opportunity how would that be for you if I ask him questions and um, you allow him to speak through you okay okay very good thank you so much so Tomorrow, welcome in our space today. Uh, once again, I'm honored um, for our connection and for your presence here. It says it's my pleasure. Okay, so I would like to allow you to um, give your message to us. Um, I would like to allow you to, to speak and, and, and share with us what it is that you, you wish to share. Mm -hmm. First, um, when you ask to connect with him, or the first image that came to my mind is that it's like my head um, as a dragon is, you know, um, against his own head and that makes a connection head to head. So this is how we can connect and how he's going to telepathically give me the information. Wonderful. Thank you for this uh, clarification. Um, do you have a specific question? Because I have like so many things crossing my mind. And... I do have many questions. I just wanted to give you first um, perhaps the, the space to share if there's anything you wanted to share um, before I proceed with questions. Okay. Yes, we want to share that we are here and we are everywhere. We are part of the universe, part of the other energies that you might know better than us. We also exist. We are here to help, to help us and to help you humans. Your planet is ascensioning and we can help with that. We can help planet itself and we can help you if you can open to us. Mm -hmm. Just let um, know that we do exist. Open a window to us, to this reality. We have sent many humans, well, we have sent many dragons to become humans on Earth, like Virginie and so many others, as part of volunteers. It's all processing. It's all on now. It's happening. We are pure love. And we don't have anything to do with the visions that some of you might have about us. Ask yourself why. 
why dragons are being um, evilized. I don't know if that's okay. Why people have make us evil. Think about that. When things are extreme, it's not correct because everything in the universe is in balance, is as neutral as possible. So when there is something very bad, it's that something is being exaggerated. I don't know if that's clear. <laughs> Would you like to tell us a little bit more about, about that? What do you mean? Yes, I think... Uh, so, I think he means that um, about about the way we have we see dragons in uh, um, in so many countries on earth we see dragons are um, evil are uh, bad uh, creatures um, coming from Satan and, and stuff like that um, and this is a, an image that it's it's too much exaggerated so if when something is too much it's not natural it's like something is made up it's it's ex it's just being exaggerated mm -hmm. so i think he says he's inviting people to ask themselves to wonder why has it why is it so exaggerated mm. as if it's a human propaganda yes <laughs> mm. yes exactly <laughs> May I ask? Uh, may I ask you some questions? Mm -hmm. So, why are you helping humanity at this time? We have been so close, so close, for so long, here on this planet, but some other planets as well, and we are intimately linked to humans. They are like our children. You know, we have been creating planets and we have been working with um, putting things into matter, into incarnate things. So we also worked with the earth and putting humans on earth, protecting them. And humans have been corrupted by themselves, by their own vices, and for that reason we had to leave at one point, because it was a matter of self-protection. But we are very sad about that, and for so many of us this is a bad memory. So you we went won't... with us, uh, with humans on, on Earth, you physically were on this planet? In a way, yes. Not your way. But in a way, we were physically on Earth. Mm -hmm. But not in your way. Not in your vibration or dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. Um, was When was that? Was it uh, the times of uh, Lemuria or Atlantis? or Lemuria, yes. Atlantis as well, and it started to fall down from this moment. Mm -hmm. But some of us are still on Earth, but in an etheric way, in a very, very etheric way, mm -hmm. for protection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So at that time you were interacting with humans? Mm, yeah. Uh, most of us knew about us and you know when you believe something you see it yeah so that's why people could see us because they knew we existed mm. it was so obvious for them that we did exist that they could see us mm -hmm. and feel us mm -hmm. 
not always in the same dimension as humans were. Yeah, yeah. You said that you are linked with, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you said that you are linked with humans. Um, is that in a genetic way? No, in a love way. Would you like to tell us more about that? What do you mean? Humans have been teaching us a lot of things and we have been te teaching them a lot of things as well. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a team and we were working together not only on planet Earth but some other planets as well. This is like a a scheme that existed on many realities and we chose to work with humans because we could feel the strength and the love we knew that their hearts could be so strong and our love for them wanted to be that way unfortunately some shadow came through and came from the human. Love turned to hate and to fear. And we knew, we knew it was a risk. But our love was so strong that we, would, we were ready to take the risk. Which risk you mean? Massacre. The humans um, the humans turned back t to us, um, they decided we were uh, worth killing to get our power, to get our strength. They were taken by superstition, by fear, by power, thirst for power. And they started to think that by killing dragons, they could have all of this killing or controlling, dominating, all of these foolish intentions. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's where all our folklore uh, myths and stories and all, even in religion come from. Sure. Yes, nothing is invented. Everything is real at some level, somewhere. Mm. So uh, that was the point where you decided to physically um, remove yourself from... from yes. Mm. Yes, we, have, we had to abandon human. It was not really aban an abandon because it was for our protection and we could no longer stay on Earth. But we felt, I felt like I was abandoning humans and Earth. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was abandoning my kids, my children. Mm -hmm. And that they did not understand anything anymore. So it was heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. But I guess it was a collective decision of your of your group, so you had to you had to live with, uh, with your yes group. for those who could who still could because so many of them so many of dragons died at this moment mm. were killed massacred. This is what happened to Virginie as she was a dragon at that moment in one of her lives. I could I as Smur left but some of the dragons like Virginie died in horrible ways humans thought foolishly that our treasure was just money inside our belly this is really stupid our treasure is our love for humans but they did not see that because they were just angry and in thirst of power so humans went deep down that's their path it's okay 
we had to to live to grieve to protect ourselves some of them are still grieving still angry but a lot of us are willing to come back in another way in different manners because times have changed mm -hmm. we want to come back because it's time now for this planet to change you he says something like you can't seriously continue like this mm. can you <laughs> no many of us of us know that mm. we are i think we are hanging from a very thin string on this planet mm. everything and um Unfortunately, not everyone, but more and more people are beginning to see this, which start to wake up. Yeah. It's like there is a, a cloud over, over humans. Mm -hmm. At first I wanted to say over the earth, but then no, it's, it's mainly a cloud over humans that pushes humans down to the floor and makes it harder to wake up and to want to wake up. What is this cloud? I guess it's symbolic. What, uh, what does it represent? So many things. Beliefs, fear, mm. resistance, and some other entities that take advantage of this. But what I understand now, they only take advantage. They can't really do anything much, anything more. So if one day humans start to stop being, being scared, if humans start to wake up, the cloud will just vanish. And those other entities won't have any more power over them. So the power of humans is really strong. It's actually the same as us, as all the other beings, but humans don't even know about that. And we dragons want to tell them that they are as strong as us. Only the strength is not in our body, in their body. Strength is in trusting the universe, Interesting love. Yeah, we, we give them permission to manipulate us. Exactly. But most people don't even know about that. Mm, yeah. Until now. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like everything is a big mess. But that mess is a good one because people are going to ask themselves questions think what they really want what they don't want anymore what kind of life and world they do want and for those who are still resisting times are going to get harder because the lesson must be learned by the greatest number so if I could say a message to all those who are going to listen to this, open your heart. Open your heart means only remember when you were a kid and you wanted to believe all the joyful stuff that you heard on TV, on cartoons or tales and know that all of this is true at some point, at some level. As long as it makes you joyful. Keep inside, keep it inside you. Mm. And these uh, stories, these um, so-called fairy tales, they had very simple but very, very powerful messages. Yeah, sure. And why is there so many tales about dragons all over the world? Mm because we were here 
so long. We are so close to humans. We love the humans so much. They are our friends, our children, but in some way they are they can be our masters as well. Everyone can be anyone's master. Humans have that power too. They have that potential. So many clouds are on them, inside them. To help that, one can imagine that a dragon will blow on it. Blow on the clouds inside us, inside humans. It's funny because I have like my, my brain and his message at the same time. <laughs> so, he's, yes, he says like, imagine that a dragon, any dragon, no one cares what dragon it is. Any dragon that will blow on the clouds inside yourself, outside. You can even imagine that a dragon would do that all over the planet. It won't hurt. And the more people will do that, the more it will help. It's not only in the head, it's not only imaginary. It really works. First in the energetic levels and then going down to the physical level. Don't give up hope. Don't listen to them, to those people who say that we are doomed, that our planet is completely polluted, that we are going to live to Mars, etc. No. Everything can change at any moment. Those beliefs are just part of the clouds. Do you want those clouds? Do you want to believe that the planet is polluted and the only solution would be to go on another planet? Mm -hmm. If you want to believe this, okay, well. But if this story doesn't make you joyful, then know that this must not happen. Well, this should not happen. This is a potentiality. It's possible that this does not happen. Yes, that's a good, yeah, good words. <laughs> we ultimately we write this the story, right? Mm, yes, exactly. Mm. We want the happy end. Yes, sure. The happy end is not necessarily going on Mars. <laughs> okay, he says. I know Virginie is concerned about that idea because she's watched a series on Netflix mm. uh, called um, Away. So a team is going to Mars mm. to eventually settle on Mars. And Virginie finds it's quite stupid because we have a beautiful planet on Earth and we just want to go away on a desertic planet. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I would um, I would like if you could uh, share a little bit with us about your um, your world and a little bit of uh, history for people who have uh, never heard about your race. Uh, mm. We dragons are part of the source. We came from the originated light, as well as every being every conscious, every part of source, we are part of it. Some of us are closer to this original light. Some of us are closer to density like yours. We are everywhere, every dimensions, every time, everywhere in space, on planets, in between, in other universe, we are there. We are a part of your memory that has been completely forgotten. And remembering now who we are and our presence is remembering little by little who you are, humans part of yourself 
We are part of yourself. You are part of ourselves. You say we are fantasy creatures. I like this word. Fantasy. Fantasy means something you'd like to be true, right? And we are true. So I'm happy to announce to you that we are no longer fantasy creatures. <laughs> He's got humor. <laughs> I was hoping he would say that. <laughs> mm. Fantasy creature is just a protection that humans, you know, use. It's like a cloud. Cloud on the head. Now you can erase that cloud. Fantasy creatures are true creatures. They're just on other dimensions. And you can try. Try to ask for signs. Ask to feel them hear them and just trust you trust yourself as we are doing right now it's just a game mm -hmm. remember when you were a children or when you were a child and you were playing inventing worlds inventing friends having conversation with imaginary friends were there were they imaginary at that time, you did not think that so. They were really true, true friends. Just go back to that moment where you thought everything was possible. Because that's reality. Everything is possible. And we dragons are real creatures. And you have given us a specific shape. Wings like dinosaur with wings <laughs> but we have many shapes actually and we are mainly energy so don't bother giving us shapes we're just energy of course we like our body we like the way you represent us not always but some dragons you draw some dragons you have in movies are really beautiful, aren't they? Mm. We are also that. We can be everything. So We're this, like... Sorry, yes? So These uh, representations um, of how we humans represent dragons, is it in any way accurate in, in, in some way? Yes, it is accurate. But it's not only that. Mm. It's much more than that. I see. And okay. you humans have a, def um, a specific body, a definite body. Mm. Um, you can change it by surgery, you can change the color of your hair, but you have this kind of body. Mm -hmm. Two legs, two arms, a head. And we dragons can change our body if we want to. So the way humans are representing us is okay mm -hmm. it is a part of reality it is some reality somewhere is it perhaps because that's how you um, rep you presented yourself while um, on while visiting our planet yes well yes we chose this body this mm. kind of body we can Every dragons you can see on Earth, I mean, every representation of dragons, so mm. Asian dragons, um, yeah. they, they're all valid, yes. Mm. And then we will choose whichever we prefer, whichever will resonate with us. Um, for example, myself, uh, Virginie sees me as a very massive dragon, very Mm, earthy, like with very thick, thick uh, skin, almost like a rock dragon. Because I want to, I want, okay, I want her to see me as a rock. I am a her rock, and so, you know, I'm strongly anchored, strongly rooted in the ground to be with her 
as a support. And also it does vibrate quite well with me. I like this representation. My question then is, um, you, from what I understand, you have the ability to, to shapeshift or materialize and dematerialize. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm. But basically we do vibrate well with the way you see us. We like this representation. Mm-hmm. It's okay with us and it's, um, it's part of who we are. Mm. Yeah. I just wanted to, to say something about the, what you were talking about earlier, about the fantasy creatures, how you commented on that, which I, which I really, really loved hearing. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to say the title I, I have given to the series is uh, Fantastic creatures mm. because I use the word fantastic in a sense of saying that it's amazing very beautiful yeah. or gorgeous or in that way and uh, I was very glad to hear you saying that um, you don't exist in the fantasy but you are actually real and uh, mm, yes and we are fantastic yes <laughs> <laughs> we could be <laughs> I think so too, yeah. So, do you have a home planet? Do you have a, a, a place where you reside physically, where is your base, so to say, that uh, you have physical world, like planet, like? Yes. Well, many planets. Um, actually, we are like uh, we are like humans. You know, you can find humans beings, human beings on so many planets. Mm. And it's the same for dragons. You can find us on very various planets. And you can also find us just in space, just um, hanging is the word that com- that's coming. Yeah. Hanging in space. <laughs> yeah. Or in the light, or just as uh, light beings. We have a wide range of beings. I don't know if it's that correct but that's the sentence is that's coming to my mind mm-hmm. meaning that yes you can find dragons in so many dimensions even um, light beings or ascended masters so those beings don't really have any planets you yeah. see yeah I understand that and now that you mentioned ascended masters I was um, curious to ask you if you have friendship <laughs> quote unquote or good connection with any of our um, known um, ET races? Well, we know, actually, you know, we know everyone, I mean, at some level, but you humans on Earth are one of the rare uh, species, rare beings that, uh, that feel not linked to this species, this thing, stuff like that you know Mm -hmm. so everyone is always linked to everyone and then you just choose to strengthen the link or not so we could yes be linked to et what you call et species some of us are uh, working working with a it's not really the word he wants to say but we understand better that word Because working is not like their job, it's just like their purpose. Mm. Um, some of them, uh, are, so, some, some of us dragons are working with humans or uh, ET species or even what you call angels. Yeah, we could be linked to anyone, anywhere. I would like to ask you if you have any genetic link with the um, Draco and the reptilians is this race which is again i know many many sub races in the reptilian category are they in some way an offshoot of your dna are you in any way related to them uh, genetically yes in a way mm. talking but talking about genetic is quite complicated because virginie understands genetic when you have a physical body but not when you have an energetic body, so... But yes, we are kind of related to them. It's like they are distant cousins. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, very distant cousins, and they have different agendas, different purpose. Those who chose to incarnate into a Draco body, for example, have chosen this kind of life. Quite, quite fond of war and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, it's not the same. So, would you say that? Uh, would you say that it is true that um, you are genetic, genetically related to them? That you and the race are um, older. Genetically, say. yes. Well, yes, we are related, but but they chose a different path. Yes, distant cousin is the best image, the best idea that I can give to yeah. to explain that in the same time we are related, yeah, genetically or energetically. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Virginie can't really yeah process the information <laughs> that's fine but yeah we we do um, we do have some some very funny but we don't really function the same way i see can i ask one more question on this subject and you if it's appropriate you may respond yeah i am aware that this uh, race the, the reptilian race the draco have influenced our race a lot I mean, humanity, the last thousands of years, and they have manipulated um, humanity in a big way. I would like to hear your perspective on that and, and your view and your relation to your opinion and your perspective, your relation to that, what, um, what has occurred, and uh, what is your relationship as a race with with them we find it quite sad that they don't have anything better to do than that than just to eat nourish themselves of other people's fear other people's trust for um, not trust thirst for power but everything is fair everything is correct so it's everyone's path to understand that we see that from a higher perspective we are in our hearts because again like we said earlier in humans in some level allowed for this allowed this to happen yes some humans are calling for this mm. because it serves it serves what they want or what they think they want. Mm. But those humans are not meant to stay. And more and more people are opening their hearts. So we are quite optimistic. Mm. And we know that everything is okay. You talked a lot about the heart. Heart is everything. Staying in your heart pushes away fear, pushes away too many questions in your head, pushes away then anxiety, for example, pushes away everything you don't really need in the present time, and pushes away all the conflicts one can have inside. For example, when you talk, when humans talk about um, being disconnected or the illusion of being disconnected. Yes, this is all just an illusion because at every moment you are always connected. You can't be separated, you are just one whole being. The physical body and the other bodies and your higher self and all the parts that you were, that you are, that you are going to be all here at the same time. Never disconnected. But Fear, daily life, everything in your world, in your world can be a challenge and can be a thing that gives the impression to be disconnected. When you just trust that everything is okay, that everything is here right now, then you no longer have questions 
and you just just can be there if every human could do this all the time but all the time it's quite difficult first but if every human could do this more and more, more, and more then you'll see your world change so many, so much faster but nothing is helping you in your world TV, social media, etc. Always um, teasing your mind, your questions, your ego. Everyone wants to say, I'm better, I know that, this is my opinion. If everyone just stayed inside themselves and said, okay, it's like this, I'm staying here. it would be better so this is why and this is where we could help by connecting to us thinking about us at that moment and asking for our help asking for our breath again one can imagine that we are blowing on every questions that we are blowing on everything that is no longer useful just to remain in the center of ourself and that's being in the heart <laughs> mm -hmm. awesome so how can people connect with you how where can people find you <laughs> people can find us well in their hearts in their joy for example when someone is watching a movie with a dragon and that person is thinking, wow, this dragon is wonderful, or has goosebumps watching this dragon. This is a sign we are here. We are close to this person. This is a sign that this person is connected to us. And the person only has to think about us. We are here all the time, just thinking. Mm. Your, your stronger power are your thoughts. Think of something and it becomes real. So you are uh, available to anyone who would like to connect with you? Yes, with everyone. Some people have a stronger connection because of their essence. But everyone can be connected to dragons as long as they, as they want to. As long as it's genuine, authentic. Everyone can ask for help, and if it's meant to be, we can help. Yes, there are some people that are strongly connected to us, a bit stronger than other people. Yes, of course. Like, for example, Virginie and so many other people. Those people we were talking about earlier that are dragons and chose to come on planet Earth as human, for example. All those humans that we call dragon riders, those are really strongly connected to us as well. They are our friends. I love that you said dragon riders. It was always one of my dreams. <laughs> well, <laughs> ask yourself why then. <laughs> I just love this one. It brings me so much joy and so much freedom. So yes, exactly. Yeah, magnificent. Mm -mm. So, if thinking about this gives you joy, gives you happiness, gives you like, ah, wow, fantastic. Yeah. Well, keep that sensation, keep that emotion, and it's it means something. And it's strong, and it's a sign. This is a good vibration, and this is the kind of emotion that we would like everyone to feel. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Is there any, any, anything uh, you would like to say as a closing message? Mm, yes. I can feel his, the love is so strong and he's got a message about love. So he wants to say that, that uh, dragons are love beings above all. 
and he wants us, well, he wishes that we forget about all the evil, all the fear that is around dragons, all the tales that say that dragons are killers, are devil. This is not true. This is completely the opposite. And we are, we are pure love and we love you so much humans. You don't even know. Just remember. More and more of you remember now and we are so happy. And we can't wait for you to remember even more, even, even stronger. The link that we are, that we have together. Uh, it's like a couple that has broken up and now wants to get back hmm. together. Like a reunion. Yes, it's time for reunion. Yes, it's again, as you said before, it's um, a part of our memory. But if it, uh, I see like a, a, like a, a brain and it's taking like almost half of the brain like um, a memory that's taken, that's taking half of the brain and that we have forgotten. So he says that we have forgotten so many things of our history as humans on earth and that now little by little we are getting to remember. Mm. And they're also helping to do that. And he's, I see him open, opening his wings and like with the intention of taking people under his wings to protect them. They are protectors. All of them, all of the dragons are protectors. This is such a beautiful image. Mm. Truly beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Smore. Thank you for your messages, for your wisdom, for your uh, presence, for your assistance and for your love. My pleasure. Thank you. It has been an honor to connect with you. He says like, I feel like he says he's happy to do this. Like, okay, let's do this again. 